Welcome to another Creative Anger Tech Tutorial. Today, I will be showing you how to install Raspbian and how to pre-configure Wi-Fi connectivity for your Raspberry Pi. This way, when your Raspberry Pi boots Raspbian for the first time, you can SSH into your computer without needing a keyboard and screen hooked up. You simply connect over Wi-Fi. All right, getting Raspbian installed and ready is super simple. You visit the Raspbian webpage at raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. You click on that giant icon that says Raspbian. On the download page, you pick between the light or desktop version of the operating system. The light version is command line only. The desktop version has a fully functional desktop environment installed. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using the Raspbian Stretch with Desktop installer since I plan to use the same installation in the future for other video tutorials. I've already downloaded this file for the sake of saving some time. I'll extract the file, which leaves us with an operating system image. At this point, we'll need to use a program named Etcher to burn this image to an SD card. If you don't have Etcher, you can download it from www.etcher.io. Etcher is extremely simple to use. You open the program, you select your image file, select the SD card you want to burn it to, and click Flash. Be sure you're selecting the proper drive. Once you start the process of burning the OS image, it cannot be reversed. You don't want to accidentally wipe over your favorite portable hard drives of kittens and softcore porn. After several minutes of waiting, Etcher will tell you that the burn has completed successfully. You should see the SD card mount to several hard drives on your computer. If this doesn't happen, remove the SD card and plug it back in. You'll want to open up the newly created drive named boot. First, we'll start with enabling SSH. It's extremely simple. You'll right click in the window, select new, and then select text document. You'll create a file named SSH, all lowercase, with no extension appended to the end of the file name. Windows will ask you if you actually want to do this. You'll click yes. Next, we're going to set up the Wi-Fi. In the description, I've left two links. One is a template for Raspbian Stretch, and one is for Raspbian Jesse. We'll create another file in the boot directory, this time named wpa underscore supplicant.conf. We'll copy the contents of the appropriate template into this supplicant file and modify it as necessary. As you can see, we'll replace the SSID and the password. Save the file, close it out. Now we'll pop open the Windows command prompt. Once opened, type in arp-a. Screenshot the results, Leave the window open, save the results somehow. It'll make your life a little bit easier in just a moment in some certain circumstances. Now, we pop the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and power it up. Once it's fully booted, it should automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network you selected. The Raspberry Pi kit I'm using has a built-in 7-inch touchscreen to make demonstrating this a little bit easier. Of course, there's still one more final step. We need to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. There are a few ways to go about doing this. The first way is to go back to that command prompt and once again type in arp-a. Compare the two results. If this method doesn't work this time around, don't be too surprised. It's a bit of a crapshoot, but if it works, it's definitely the fastest way to find your Raspberry Pi's IP address. The next way is to log into your router, view all devices on the network, and find your Raspberry Pi by its hostname. This will be different with every router. My routing solution, made by Ubiquity Networks, has a clients list. Most residential grade routers have a DHCP table that you can refer to. Of course, you're always welcome to plug in a keyboard and monitor, but that defeats the purpose of the concept of an unattended system that doesn't require a keyboard or a monitor to set up and configure. At this point, you should have the IP address from one of the above methods, and you should be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pi to manage and manipulate it as you desire. I did plan to make a basic tutorial on a Assigning a static IP address to a Raspberry Pi, but I've opted to link a written blog post below in the description instead. I feel that a written tutorial for IP address management is easier to follow up on than a video would be. If this video helped you, please give this video a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to our channel. If you didn't like it, tell us why in the comments below. Your comments, both good and bad, are what allow us to develop videos that are helpful to everyone. As always, thank you for watching, and see ya!